Welcome back to Veteran Idiot. On today's episode, Scrappy turns 34, gets his first rectal exam. I'm elbow deep under here, and I don't like what I'm seeing. Seems sturdy enough, although the frame may collapse down around the arms, no big deal. So a bunch of you are asking for an address to send some fan mail and whatever else you want to send me. Well, I got one for you. It's right here. I'm not going to say it out loud for risk of bots recovering it from my voice and people trying to serve me with things. But if you want to send me some stuff, some fan mail, whatever you like to send me, go ahead and send it to that address there. I'll open it up on the channel or depending on what it is you sick bastards send, I may or may not open it on the channel. I do enjoy uh, getting stuff from you guys. So thank you for the ones that have already sent stuff. And thank you to those that who intend to send some fan mail. I'll read through it and we'll have good times. So this thing's up in the air. Got some problems in the back here. Hence the rectal exam this morning. Went over it a little bit in the last episode. If you didn't watch the last episode because it had an LS and a square body on it, shame on you. Shame on you. It's the most aggressive knife hand I've got. Shame on you. I get it, but shame on you. So anyways, we got a bunch of stuff going on back here. I don't know what's going on with it, but we're gonna take it apart. We're gonna see what it is. And uh, well, anyways, let me just show you what we got. So for those of you that don't know, the undercarriage of this thing is beat up. Somebody took it on a police chase, ran it over some rocks, did all kinds of crazy stuff. It is no bueno. Cracked floor here. It's just not good. Not good stuff. Exhaust has been dragged on every single speed bump that ever existed. It's bent here, so I can't get this junction up any higher than it is now. It's just not, not good stuff. And then we get back here. And then part of the reason we're back here is because we need to go and change this pinion seal, change out the oil in the back. I haven't been in the diff to see any of it yet, so I need to check that out. Plus we got lots of movement back here. This thing is wagging down the road. Could be these guys. I'm not going to say it's not, they're bias ply and it says dirt right here, which is good indication that they shouldn't be on the road, but they're good for uh, like street no prep and stuff like that. So it's kind of a cool, nostalgic, old Mercury tire car. Anyways, I need to open this up, see what the gears look like in here. Sucker is hot, so not great, but there's a lot of popping going on here and it's when you take off and it could be this c-clip issue over here maybe these bearings on this side are not in great shape but c-clips kind of do that that's just the way they are done lots of gear jobs and lots of cars it's just kind of what c-clips do but this is kind of a, a knocking thunking as they're taking off that sounds similar to that so we'll go ahead and we'll pull this cover off and we'll check it out the exhaust is hitting the axle there that's nice the gas tank's hitting the uh, exhaust there so we're all just communicating right now that's good. These bushings are terrible. These control arms are noodles. They flop all over the place. I don't see any egging or shiny spots on the nuts to indicate that they're loose and moving around. So that's good, but not good in a sense that it doesn't really point in any direction that's obvious other than these bushings are probably toast. Without further ado, we'll just start tearing this sucker apart and see what we find along the way. Starting with this 
diff cover and jumping into the rear end. Got a pinion seal and axle seals just in case we gotta go down that road. Well, the pinion seal's gotta go, for sure. We're changing that no matter what, but if we have to pull the axles, we'll change those seals too. So for those y'all who have done gears before and are familiar with that, one glove, that's all I get. Cool, all right. Use it to our advantage. Do I want it on this hand? Yeah, sure, why not? So, those of you familiar with doing gears know that it is a disgusting job. It's messy, you get crap everywhere, it stinks. You sometimes gotta do it two or three times to get the right backlash, and it's just, it's terrible. It's no fun at all. There are some advantages to knowing how to do this stuff. You can troubleshoot what you need to, and you can install new gears should you want to. So, I mean, it's a good skill to have. It's just not fun. I used to do it on the daily, lots of Jeeps and stuff like that. And really Dana 30, 35s and 44s, they're all really easy to do gear, gear jobs on. They kind of just come out. You can almost use the, the factory shims, not the factory shims, but the factory size shims to go back in place and call it a day. Uh, pattern usually comes out pretty good. 14 bolts are easy to do, uh, 4 to 9 inches are easy to do, anything with adjustable uh, shims on either side is, is easy to do. So you start getting into having to change out the shim under the pinion bearing to get more depth or stuff like that, then it just becomes a pain in the ass because you're pulling it off and sometimes you got to cut the bearings off because they break trying to pull the race off, blah blah blah. You end up uh, really into it just to try and get the right pattern. So it can be somewhat of a pain. Otherwise, it's just tedious. Tedious, messy, stinky, but a good thing to know how to do. So what I'll do is I'll usually pull all of them off except for the top one. I'll loosen the top one and then I'll rack on it, get it to move. And that'll drain all the fluid out down into the pan in not so aggressive manner. Because things can get out of hand real quick. There can be oil everywhere. And this one's leaking at the pinion and some at the cover. So it's kind of just goopy crap everywhere. We'll scrape all that off, clean it up, don't worry. And then we'll spray paint this and it'll look brand new. This cover is really hot, really, really hot. All right, get the mallet, give it a couple wraps, see if it pops open. Which considering it's already leaking, it should just pop right open. Oh yeah. Oil doesn't look that good, or that bad, actually. Really thin, so it got really hot at one point. Makes you think if it was ever changed after they did the gear job. Because it's got four tens in it right now. So somebody put gears in this. But as thin as this oil looks, it is so broken down that either Preload was too tight, it has no backlash, and the oil got extremely hot, or they never changed it from when they actually did the gears, and then when it hot set or broken. When you put new gears in, they have to seat, and they have to find their pattern, and this causes a lot of friction and a lot of heat, and really breaks down the oil. So like the max you should go like 500 miles. What you really need to do is you need to just hit it on the freeway for 20, 30 minutes, come and park it, let it set for hours, cool all the way down. And then that's kind of your break in. You can do it over and over if you want to, but usually just one time is good enough to do it. Anyways, 500 miles is usually what I say, come in and get the, the gear wheel changed. If you don't do that, it turns to water and it's just not good. And it's really not gonna be helpful for all this business back here. Let's see what we got under door number one. This cover is really hot. Really, really, really hot. Right. Oh boy. She's nice. Stinky. Man, that smell. Ooh, that smell. Nothing like it, I'll tell you. It sticks with you too. All right. We'll get it cleaned off with some brake clean. See what we got for a pattern. Eh, backlash seems all right-ish. It seems a little bit high. I don't have my dial indicator with me, so I can't tell you one way or another whether it's too high or too low, but there's a lot. So it seems like there's a pretty large back gap in there. It's hard to tell 
the pattern right now. I don't have any paint either. So we'll clean up with some brake clean and see what we can't see on the gear itself to give us a good indication of the pattern. From what I can tell, there's no flaring, there's no melting and no pitting or anything like that. So the gears is probably still good. That may not be our issue. And this, although it's kind of a lot, we'll see. Also, they're checking for brake cleaning in the oil now. So now I can't just spray it out into the oil pan. What's this world come to? Cool, we're all cleaned up, all sprayed out. The pattern looks pretty good. As you can see, it goes all the way across. It's deep. Uh, it may be a little shallow on the pinion just because the pattern starts right here and it's kind of a uh, or obvious where here and then across. But otherwise, it looks good. There's no pitting on it. There's no like melting or slagging off of the edge or flaring. So it looks pretty good. We look at the coast side here. It looks pretty good. It's right in the center, goes across. I think all in all, the pattern looks pretty good. What do you guys think? Let me know what you think in the comments there. But I would say this pattern passes the test. Now, as far as how much backlash is, I can't tell you. I don't know, it feels like a lot, but um, that may be part of the reason why we got noise on the coast side um, or deceleration because of that large backlash. But let's take a look at the limited slip, see if it's holding up. Uh, spin the sucker up so we can see the spider gears. The limited slip itself, the plates are in this side. There's a spring plate to hold tension on the spider gears out against the outside. And that's to keep them from spinning freely between each other. So they call it a limited slip because it slips limitedly. Is that correct how you would say that? Anyways, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take one of uh, each tire and push them in the opposite, opposite direction just see how easily it goes. It's pretty tight. Oh, yeah. That sucker's still good. We're still good. Mother of Jehovah. Yeah, we're good. It's good. There's some center pin play. It's, I would just call it, it's free in there. You can see it going back and forth, but it's not mushroomed. It's just nice and free in there. Spin around the other side. Yeah, most of that clunking you're hearing there is that backlash. Like I said, I think there's a lot there. Okay, issue doesn't appear to be here. There's not a lot of wear on the inside. That center pins, C clips look good. I don't know, man. All right, we'll start looking at these control arms and everything else. So these numbers on here, this uh, 10 by 41 means there's 10 pinion teeth and 41 ring gear teeth. And then all you do is you divide 41 by 10, that gives you the 410. So that's all you do for the numbers to try and figure out your gear ratio. Sometimes they actually have the ratio written on there, but most of the time it's written this way in this format. Another way you can do it, you can set the car down on the ground mark a vertical line on the tire and then mark a line on the drive shaft itself and then roll the car forward and count how many times the drive shaft rotates in relation to the tire and that'll give you once the tire is all the way around back to the bottom that'll give you the ratio of the gears or get you in the ballpark so you have somewhat of an idea what the gear ratio is. But if you're gonna pull the cover, it's right there. And a little equation will get you what you want. Well, before we get too deep into the control arms and everything else, let's just go ahead and change out this uh, pinion seal. Oh yeah, I can see some, some silver on the inside of these upper control arms. So got some movement there. The noodles, anywho, well, here too. Yeah, these bushings are toast. This one's completely wiped out. We'll pull these lower control arms down and take a look, but they appear to be wiped out on the bushings. Anyways, back to what I was saying, U-joint, not a lot of movement in the pinion itself, just that backlash, pretty heavy backlash. Let's pull this drive shaft down, change out this pinion seal before we get too deep into anything else. Because we're already here, might as well just dig in. God, that's disgusting. Bump stops tore up too. It's real nice. <laughs> I put uh, Loctite on these, so they're nice and locked. 
That's what you should say. Oh, mother of Jehovah Witness. I put too much, there's too much on there. So as you can tell, we were having all kinds of fun there with some flames and everything else. I put too much blue Loctite on the nuts for the uh, draft shaft and pinion. So I had to heat them up. Works great, just heat them up a little bit. They'll spin right out. That way you don't have to try and pull the car off of the lift. And we can tell that this lift is very sturdy. So I wasn't concerned at all about doing that. But if you were concerned, you could probably pull the car off the lift, trying to yank it out and get that bolt loose. And put we're loose, it's pulled out. I was gonna pull this uh, front bearing off to take a look at it, see if there was any pitting or any wearing or bluing or anything else like that. But it's pretty pretty well on there. And I don't wanna take the carrier out to punch a pinion out the back. Just not a whole lot of reason why I would need to do that. So we're not gonna do that. But uh, washer's back on here, cleaned up the surface here, pop the seal out. I usually use like a claw that pops the seal out. It has like a, a rocker and a hook and a clock and an arm. You pull on it and it pops the seal out the other side. But I just chased it around with a pry bar and uh, got it off. You gotta be careful doing that. You don't wanna mar up the housing, but the actual sealing surface is the inside of the housing. So as long as you're not marring up the inside of the housing, it's not really a big issue. But what we need to do now is we need to put it all back together. So I got the new seal. And what I do with these seals is I take the grease gun there and I squirt a little grease on the inside edge of this and then a little uh, on the actual where the yoke goes. And I do that because you see there's a tiny little spring that runs around the inside lip of this. And sometimes when you're pounding them in, any vibration or whatever will pop that spring out the other side. Now you have no tension on this seal. So I slap some grease in there, two things. It keeps the seal from burning up and it keeps that uh, spring itself in place and it's not going to hurt the oil in this system anyways so a little bit of grease will be just fine then we'll slap it in there call it a day i'm not going to sling any rtv around it because it's decent decent ish good enough is basically what i'm trying to tell you which is pretty much the case for the whole car a little gloop inside the goop Shoot a little doop de doop all over the inside. Quit moving. All right, that's it, you're fired. Good enough. Slap her back in. All right, good enough. We'll tap it down there. And then we'll get a socket that'll fit. Oh, good, good. It's the wrong size seal, so that's good. That's nice. Good, good. All right. I needed to go get lunch anyway, so we'll go get that. And we'll get some O2 sensors since those are crushed. It was meant to be. We were meant to go chase parts all that day. Okay, all right, let's go. Whee! Two hours later. Cool, <clears throat> we're back. Got the right seal and O2 sensors, only had to drive all the way across town. No big deal, got it done. <clears throat> Slap some grease in this sucker, put it up in there like we intended to do with the other one. <whistles> so the right way to do all of this and put the pinion back on is you pull the front bearing and since these have a crush sleeve in them, you have to replace the crush sleeve, but it's really kind of a pain in the ass and I don't know if any of you have ever crushed a crust leave but sometimes it takes an entire world of force to get it to crush so what we're going to do is we're going to tighten this down to the crush sleeve and check for play 
and see if the preload is, is all right. If we go too far into the crush sleeve, the preload's gonna be too tight and you have to back it out and it just won't be right at all. It'll loosen up and chatter and groan and everything else. So what I'm trying to say is that the right way to do this is pull this front bearing and replace the crush sleeve, crush it with like a four foot long breaker bar or heat it up and then crush it. But I don't really like that method. But anyways, we're gonna put this back on and then we're gonna tighten down the yoke until it's got no more forward play and then give it a little bit more till it seats on the crush sleeve and we'll call it a day. Sweet. That part is done. Come here, yoke. Make sure there's no dirt or anything that's gonna eat up the seal. That dust cover can stay on. Slap it back in here. All right, we'll pull it the rest of the way on with the nut. I don't want to bang too far that way because we'll be banging it into the gears and it's just not good. Just don't do it. Check for forward and back. Still got a little bit. Forward and back. Oh. It feels good right there. Felt its seat right up against the crush leaf. Oh yeah. All right, that's done. Again, this is just a quick and easy way, not the right way. Gotta go find some blue Loctite. Seal these puppies up. All right. All right, took those puppies down. It's all set in place, nice, nice. Cool. Backlash feels the same, and by the same, I mean a lot. Let's clean up this portion here. So the best thing to do here is to hit this with a disc, like with those scotch Bright discs, clean it all off. It's actually fairly clean. There's no like grooves or anything or any RTV stuck on here. So we're not gonna worry too much about it. We'll real quick hit it with a razor blade, call it a day. So just like with when we changed out the axle in Oscar, I'm a firm believer in putting RTV around this. I don't really like putting the gaskets on, sticking them up there 60% of the time, every time it leaks. So I just throw a thin layer of RTV, actually pretty thick, around the holes, around the whole outside of it. And I slap it up there and tighten it up. Give it like 10, 15 minutes to somewhat cure and then we can fill it up. But there's just too many imperfections. These uh, stamped diff covers get warped. They get pulled in on the holes. Sometimes they get tightened down on little rocks and those gaskets, they don't do anything for that. So we're gonna throw some RTV on, stick it up there. And then we'll go change out the O2 sensors while we're waiting for this to cure up. And then we'll fill it up. You're all nice and pretty now. I usually have a uh, tool for this. Makes it a lot easier than just squeezing the tube but you do what you gotta do, you know. Cool. We'll go let this set up and then, uh, or change out those O2 sensors. Sweet Caroline. Mm, mm, mm. Just another look at this rocker panel, in case you forgot from about five minutes ago what it looks like. It's real nice, real nice. Shocks me every time I take a look. It's real nice. So it may be hard to tell in this little camera here, but this one's crushed. It is straight up flattened. So we're doing to change both of them. I got some Bosch ones. They should do perfectly. We'll swap those out. Maybe that'll help us some with our idle. Doubt it, but let's try anyways. Everything is covered in this grime just everywhere disgusting bro disgusting gross hopefully we don't have to heat these suckers up to get them out hopefully they just want to come out oh she's coming out oh, oh. Frick. Here 
I am standing under this lift, yanking on it back and forth again. Idiot. Hopefully it's not galled it up and it's trying to freeze itself in there. That would be so awesome. Not really. So we'll heat it up. Let's see what we get. All right, now let's give it the juice. Be a nice guy. Come up there, please. Please. Oh, oh. Are you gonna do it? Oh, it's pretty golden. Oh, hit myself in the face. That's cool. We're good. Keep going. Don't let it throw you. Ow! Ow! Oh yeah. Frick me sideways. We have to tap that guy. Sweet. So, just trying to, just trying to fix things. One step forward, two steps back. Step forward, two steps back, two steps. Two step in a scoot up car. All right. Why uh, don't you come out easier than that one? Oh, keep on coming, baby. Keep on coming. There we go. All right, let's see if we can find a tap for that one and struggle through that. Bottomless rage. Oh, it's in. There was no problems at all getting that in. Just popped right in. All I gotta do is plug it in now. Beautiful. Look at that. Like it was meant to be. No issues. Hmm. Put a little zippy up there. Good to go. Now that all that's out of the way, we can start filling this guy up. The fill plug is on this side. That fresh rebuild. Maybe. No? There it goes. Hmm. Well, that can don't work, so that's as much rebuild as it's getting, apparently. So, our conclusion with this whole thing back here is that. It's just C-clip noise. Everything else looks good. Inside the gears look good. Um, fresh seal on, fresh fluid, freshly painted cover. Control arms are wasted. Could have a lot to do with our side-to-side -side wandering. Also, the shocks, oddly enough, are stretched. The eyelets are stretched. Curious how that happened. Maybe somebody jumped it or something. Anywho, tires, control arms, and then the play and the C-clips, all contributing, wandering. And then the skinnies up front. So I think we're all good. Everything looks okay-ish. The bushings need replaced at some point soon, but I think we're good to go. I was just worried something was coming apart back here and it's not. So let's get it on the ground. We'll pull it up in the shade here and monkey with the idle a little bit now that we got the O2 sensors in. So let it warm up, get up the temperature. It had a little bit of difficulty figuring out the O2 sensors when it first started up, that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and mess with the, the idle, try and get it close, and then we can go home and finish it off. I just wanna try and see if the O2 sensors can figure out and fix the idle issue. It smells a little rich. Okay, since it's up to operating temperature, we're going to go ahead and start setting the idle there, then we'll turn off the car, we'll disconnect the battery, we'll completely reset the computer, hook it all back up, hook up the idle air control, and go from there. I have the timing set at 18 degrees, uh, really like that on premium, so we're just going to go with that. There's no pinging, it comes up on the throttle really nicely, so we're going to leave that alone. All right, 
that. So that's about 900 or so, which is better than the 1100, 1200 that it was running at. Wait for the fans to kick on and then kick off. We'll shut it off and reset the whole thing. All right, battery's been disconnected. The headlights on for about five minutes now. That should have drained the computer completely. Turn off the headlights, hook it all back up, and start it up. See what we got. Plug in this IAC. My guess is it's still going to surge. Just the way it is. That's just the way it is. Things will never change. Here we go. Give it a minute to try and sort itself out. I don't think it's going to. Well, I mean, it'll eventually sort itself out, but I don't think it's gonna be any different than this every single time you start the car. You need to change out stuff, get a chip. I think that's just the way it's gonna be. There it goes. It could have a couple fouled plugs too, I don't know. I gotta pull the plugs when we get home and see what they look like, but I think this is a good enough for, for now. So as soon as I plug the IAC back in, it just wants to go back over a thousand. It's just where it wants to live is a thousand or more. No matter what I set the idle to on the throttle body, the IAC brings it up. Thousand RPM, it's what you get. All right, let's go take it for a drive, see what we get. Smoother for sure. Sure. Yeah, it picks up second gear really nice. Really, really nice. Nice and smooth, as a matter of fact. Not running hot. Oil pressure looks good. Everything looks really good. I think it's good enough for now until we get some more parts, pop up some stuff, or just leave it the way it is. That's a tough one. Probably gonna hop it up some more. Do something else. All right. I think we're at a good stopping point here. Everything feels good, everything feels tight. The car's running really good. It's really strong the way it is right now. There's probably little to no chance at all that I'm gonna even consider us leaving it this way, but it's strong. It runs really good. You can tell when it runs out of horsepower, you know that it's at its peak with what it's got for airflow coming in through the throttle body, mass airflow sensor, injectors, computer, on and on and on and on. But it's for what it is with the GT40, the gears, and all that business that we did to it in the B-cam, it is really strong. I'm really proud of this little car, even though it is beat up. It's been through prison and bent over for the soap many, many times. Oh my God. But we won't hold it against it. There is something we gotta address. The elephant in the room is that this thing has not been down the track for us yet with all the stuff that we've done. So there is still stuff we have to do before we can go down the track. I still need to get the battery disconnect. I still need to get the battery hold down set up. And uh, we got to see if these tires will pass tech, but uh, we'll go, we'll get that stuff done and we'll get it down the strip and we got to get a number before we start really putting more stuff on this thing. Uh, that way we got a good idea and you guys have a good idea if you went with this package in a notch with these old school Mercury, no prep tires and the B-cam, GT40, everything with a regular A9L computer what will it do? I'm sure a lot of you already know exactly what its possibility of doing, but sometimes we get surprised and we run some crazy stuff. 
So we'll get it out to the track. Maybe in the next episode, we'll get it done, get it ready for tech, and then try and get into the track next week. Don't, don't hold that against me if I don't get that done. It's, there's a lot of things that would prohibit that. But till next time, thanks for everyone watching. This was an episode that, you know, we got some learning in there. I taught you how to do things the wrong way. And that's good sometimes. Probably not in the long run, but I mean, it's good in some times to know what not to do, I guess. No, for real. We did it the easy way. There's a lot better ways of doing it. But till next time, thanks again for watching. Make sure you hit that super thanks. Hit me some donations. Kind of helps to uh, run these things. And um, hit the like, comment, subscribe. Share this thing with all your buddies. Let everybody know that this is the baddest fox in town. There's nobody out here that can beat it in Phoenix. Except for everybody else that can. Just ignore that I said that. But thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.